previously ish on Night's Quest. But Jamie, you've expressed interest in, I in have. I've being been... the quote unquote writer. I think it would be super cool. Again, I have no idea if it would work, but I really right. want to try it. For editing Night's Quest, I put all of the audio files on an external hard drive until recently the hard drive stopped functioning properly so I was unable to get the audio off of it. So there will still be an episode being released and it's going to be something else. I think maybe I've gotten to say this once or twice. I don't remember for sure. But welcome back to Night's Quest. We're here. Yeah. We're here. We're here. We're here. Was that... <laughs> that, was a, that was a young Horton Hears a Who reference. I was going to say. I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. It's your boy. Oh, my goodness. Hey, guys. Want to know what I just did? What'd you do? I went to just open up the timer app on my phone and instead did the calculator and stared at it for about five seconds until I realized... <laughs> That's not a timer. That's oh, just boy. some numbers and a plus sign. <laughs> and maybe a couple others. Yep, mm. as calculators. And the letter C sometimes, like yeah. instead of just clear, it's just the letter I, C. I don't know what the difference between the C and the C E one is, but there's like two. Right? Yeah, I can never remember. The C is to get rid of the. I was going to say transaction. Whatever you just <laughs> put into the yeah. calculator. So if you like put something oh, in Oh, CE is like everything. Yeah. So like oh, if you do like okay. two plus two and then you add four, and but you meant to add three, you can hit C and then you can hit plus two and it'll be that wow. answer then. Wow. Oh. Everyone, you just learned a thing. So you just CE learned a thing. just means clear everything. Yeah. Oh my God. Next week on Night's Quest, you're going to learn the difference between BC and CC. On your emails. Yeah, did we did we already make it clear that this is going to become a, like, Operating Simple Machines podcast? Yes. that's right. Yeah. yeah completely um, different. Right. BC is before chips, and CC is <laughs> chips complete. <laughs> which marks the first day that the first successful chip was made. <laughs> We're talking about emails. We weren't talking about dates. Like... <laughs> Anyway, today is a very special episode of Night's Quest. Yes, it is a very special episode of Night's Quest. And I'm freaking out because I am going to attempt to run the thing this time. Um, yeah. Should should we talk about, like, the reason? Uh, or did we kind of already put that in the last announcement? So yeah, we probably Nathan don't have put to, it right? in the thing. Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't really matter why. We're right. just doing it. Yeah. So, um so fuck you. This is something I've been wanting to try for kind of a while now. Um but I didn't seriously put in the work into finishing writing it until recently and then this opportunity popped up and uh here we are. We're going to give it a good shot and see what happens. I'm going to use different dice for this because these are Jonathan's dice. Oh, uh, wow. okay. How how heartbroken would you be if I told you you actually aren't going to need dice except, like, one time? It still matters, Jamie. Okay, sounds good. Sounds it's good. the presence of the dice. No, I hear you. So, yeah, this episode, in, in case you haven't been listening to the announcements at, at the end of the episode, shame on you. And why would um, you? You might have gotten a gold star. You don't know now. You might have. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you don't even know if I'm still doing that. <clears throat> I should redo that. Gold stars um, are like friendship points. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Stop. That that's too real. Usually, I'm the writer, and I still am. Yep. But like how the writer runs the story, that's what Jamie is going to be doing today, and so I will not be in charge. He is going to be, and this is going to be a different story, not involving Jonathan and Rainer. And that's Leroy. correct. Um, but it is still going to be in in Palladium, in yep. in the world of Night's Quest. Yep. Basically, there's only one 
there's only one point that I need this story to know about, like, the rest of Palladium and stuff. Other than that, it's going to be absolutely unconnected. I kind of want to just make an official announcement right now that this is non-canon. Um, I want to make it clear that it's not, like... Oh, maybe they'll maybe they'll go back and visit a thing from no 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 no. That's not the way this is gonna go. So you're um, saying our characters from this will never meet our characters from Night's Quest proper? I mean, do you want them to? I don't know. Do you don't. <laughs> How about this? At the end of the episode, I will say whether it's canon or not. Okay. In in the okay. most official way I can think of, which That's... which is Rainer Bjornsson's father saying, <laughs> "Yes, it's canon now, bitch." Yes. Okay, you know what? That's a good point. I that's a very good point and <laughs> I feel like I feel like Caesar I'm going to give it like a thumbs up or a thumbs down at the end where like I, a verbal one candy. that the audience yeah, can yeah. hear. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. a good analogy. Well, that's Should we just should we do it? I think so. Before the actual beginning, I need you guys help coming yeah. up with a name of a town. This is not a terribly noteworthy town. It's going to be a town in Glenwood. It's pretty small. Not particularly famous for anything. It has its fair share of, like, inns and farms and, uh, you know, not too dissimilar from Goldon. There's travelers who show up once in a while. There's really only one semi-interesting thing about it, and we'll get to that in a second. But I need your guys' help coming up with what should we name it, because I haven't come up with anything yet. Uh, the first two things that come into my head are Glippy. Okay. And Tildy. <laughs> Like like the little thing over the N in, in Spanish? Is that what that is? Uh, I think yeah. it's a tilde. I yeah. I think a tilde is, is or, a different punctuation Or thing. tilty. Like you are literally in danger of tipping over. Or tildeville. Tildeville. God, you know what, though? The more I think about it, I really am liking Glippy, though. Glippy City. The village of Q. I'm not opposed <laughs> to the village of Q. <laughs> And B in Tarif. So no, fuck but, Q. but this is spelled Q U E U E, like when people yes. line up before a movie. Quibwe. Or it's C U. Oh, that would confuse a lot of people if the name if the Q. city's name actually starts with C. But I'm also kind of into it. The village of Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I just really like the idea of a whole town having like a person's name, <laughs> just the village of Greg. <laughs> okay. The village okay. of Victor. <laughs> the village Vic- of Stephanie Q. Stephanie Q. To be honest, I'm liking. <laughs> I kind of like the town of Stephanie. <laughs> we- <laughs> and we can't use up too much more time on the name of a town, which I recognize is my fault. Fuck you, whole episode, just naming it. <laughs> but we spell it Stephanie, like the body part. Oh, I was going to say we should spell it S-T-E-P-H-U-N-A-E-E. Wow. Stephane. That is Like a that college is a town liberal name. arts major. I, you know what? Stephane. Since this is an audio medium, I think uh, the, the spelling of it is going to be up for debate, but I think the town is going to be named Stephanie. Okay, everybody listening in the... Uh, in, on the Night's Quest group, yep. um, post how you think Stephanie is spelled. <laughs> we'll have a poll. Let's really? do it. Yep. Your options are unlimited. There'll be All a right. ton of them. It's going to be great. Here we go. <clears throat> now, in the magical land of Palladium, we find ourselves in a sleepy town in Glenwood, far from the rambunctious adventures of any bards, wizards, assassins, or colorful entrepreneurs. This town has had no horrible mining accidents, no dangerous crime syndicates, no ancient societies or hidden spirits. However... Here in the quiet streets and taverns, travelers and villagers hear stories of a magnificent golden city, a renowned king and powerful wizards in grand harbors and ships that sail across the sea. They hear tales of the capital, Costarine. And the people of this town, young and old, poor and, well, somewhat less poor, most of all, they hear of the city's glorious sun festival, and they dream. Now, without the Costarine's riches and fame and proclivity for magic, the potential is somewhat more limited, but... That does not dampen their spirits. And so, every year, the celebration roars with somewhat confused, low-budget enthusiasm. And it's at night, which makes it really cool, and they're proud of that. For you see, this is not the Sun Festival. This is the Star Jubilee. 
Yes. Y'all, I'm really excited for this. I'm here for the Star Jubilee. <laughs> now, I think the very next thing we need to do is I need to know about your guys' two characters. Yeah. Wait, yeah, do didn't... we each have two characters or we each, no. each of us has? Okay. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I only came up with one. Right, right, right. <laughs> so Jamie did tell us ahead of time to think of travelers, people right. coming to the village. Is it the village or the town of Stephanie? Uh, the... Well, what's the difference? I was under the impression they were kind of sim- synonyms. Yeah, but what, it can't be named both of them. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, let's go with the village of Stephanie. Okay. That sounds cool. But yeah, the only the only thing I told them was that uh, the only point that I wrote is that they need to be not from this town. They are, as I already said, travelers. Uh, everything else is completely is completely new. Jake, do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, you go first. I was thinking... Who travels around Palladome a bunch? And Don't I'm like, you fucking dare steal a Zajax because I will punch you through this screen. <laughs> no, it's not a Zajax. <laughs> I was like, the the scribes. We, yeah. We've mentioned it before, but they're the like uh, the religious order for writerism, and they just travel around and record shit. We met one, and he traveled with everybody for a little while. Um, nah, he just was like with the gang for a bit. He didn't really travel with them. Oh no, but like in in the town, very yeah. small scale oh, yeah, traveling. The town, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I thought I'd do another scribe. Um, so he's an elf, and his name, I was I was waffling about his name. I think we're gonna go with Garendel. Is his name? So he's a he's an elf. All right, all right. And he's a scribe here to here just to record the the Star Jubilee. All right, I like the sound of that. Um, my character is a uh, a Terebian, uh sand magician. Whoa! Ooh, uh, named Cartan. Ooh, Cartan. Cool. Okay. Um, and he is uh, visiting Glenwood. Um, he's on vacation, going <laughs> oh, cool. to uh, like milder yeah. climes. And his he's he's realized uh, his sand magic isn't as useful uh, when right. he's not living in a desert anymore. <laughs> so. Does he does he maybe like carry around a little bit with him just in oh, case? Oh, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go full Gara, like he doesn't have like a whole gourd with him. Um, but yeah, he does have like a bit of sand with him that he messes around with Ang style. Just yeah, cool. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> cool. Okay, the two of you have arrived in the village of Stephanie, and <laughs> as you can see, tonight is the night. The Star Jubilee is actually starting very soon. I imagine to begin, uh, the two of you are approaching or you're already there at the kind of stage ground so to speak it's uh kind of like a town square there's a stage set up in the middle there are lots of people walking around the moon and the stars are really cool but the the moon and the stars are actually a little bit hidden because there are some really really bright torches set up uh all around this area like they're act- surprisingly bright actually uh it's a- it actually kind of hurts to look at them a little bit and there's people just talking about this setup, and uh, they're just kind of excitedly chattering to each other. More specifically, there's a woman sitting at a little makeshift desk, and she's, like, writing stuff down on parchment as people talk to her. It looks pretty much like they're signing up for stuff, because, uh, again, it hasn't completely started yet. There's an older gentleman in, like, kind of kind of raggedy farmer's clothes who's sort of yelling at some people not not like yelling angrily at them but you just get the impression that the way he talks is usually kind of ranty you know there's a very haggard looking man who uh is like running around and trying to take care of a couple of last minute tasks he looks very exhausted i think that's about it for now there's a couple other people again just kind of chatting basically you can sign up to enter right now. You can watch as the first couple of acts are performed, or you can talk to specific people. Uh, yeah, it's kind of up to you guys from here. Are uh, are we traveling together? Uh, I would say again, that's up to you. We could have. I think it's possible. Maybe like I was heading from Tarive because scribes go all over the place. So maybe we've oh, been. Are you guys both humans? No, I'm not a human. I'm He's an, an elf. elf. You know what? I'm pretty sure you said that, actually, now that I hear it. I'm yeah. sorry. Whoops. But, Jake, you're probably a... Uh, you're Terevian. Yeah, yeah. Darker skinned. So we probably both stick out in this uh, Glenwyn village. Yes. For sure. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. You probably do get a few people um, 
looking your way. None of it's, like, cruel or anything. It's mostly just people like, oh, weird, cool. Uh, Maybe a few people, like, wave at you or whatever. All right. I think we should have a little character-character scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carton, what is what is your thoughts on this beautiful little village of Stephanie? Stephanie! <laughs> well, I have to say that I, um... Uh, these villages are very much different from uh, the ones I am used to in Tarif, which is, I feel like, very much how uh, I am expecting it to be. Very much more small, very much uh, less sand, but uh, but still people, which is good. Garendel, I've pulled out my scribe scroll sleeve because they've got, like, paper that comes out of their sleeve. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And I've already started, like, I'm already, like, taking notes of everything, writing it all down. Uh, am I am I going to disturb you if I uh, make observations or ask you questions? No, I have been studying for many, many years, many, many of your lifetimes. I have the ability to write things down and have a conversation, and there'll be completely different thoughts with minimal errors. I think maybe for you there is no difference, but for me it seems very rude, like you're not paying attention to me fully. <laughs> what? This is what I was afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't we find somewhere to maybe get uh, uh, drinks and food? Because I am quite hungry after our long voyage. Yes, well, uh, well, but we just got here in time for the jubilee and that is why i am here is to observe this local custom so it can be recorded for all of time what is uh what is this uh, jubilee also i don't know why i've been miming that i'm writing the whole time for this audio <laughs> no, medium it's good. <laughs> it really adds to the effect for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just had to say it cuz no one would know there there are absolutely some uh some food and drink stalls set up Oh, great. Perfect. Yep. Carton, all I know about this Jubilee is it is a knockoff version of the Sun Festival. <laughs> oh, That's the Sun it. Festival. Yes, I have heard of this one. Yeah, Sun Festival, wonderful, amazing. Only a couple people die every year. <laughs> so we'll see how many deaths are here tonight. Uh, I'm gonna, Carton's gonna go and uh, get something to drink. Hell yeah. Um, Let's see. I think uh, the place where drinks are being sold, uh, let's see, the person running that is a pretty a pretty ordinary looking human guy, but with, uh, with every movement, like when he's handing people drinks or when he's like taking money, he just does it like in a very big, kind of like dramatic way, um, and you hear his voice a little bit like, here you go! And this one's over here for you. Oh, I need to get you proper change. And it's just kind of like that. Yeah. I think Garendel is also going to come over because he also needs a drink. All right. And, you know, still writing stuff down. He says, excuse me, what beverages? Hello. That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. <laughs> Are you one of the performers tonight? I am, thank you for asking. My name is Theodorian. Certainly you'll have heard of me before the night's over. I did. I just heard of you right now. Uh -huh. Yes. That, that's an excellent point, sir. Your wit is sharp. It's, it's sharp. <laughs> you are... Would you like something to drink? A wordsmith. <laughs> High praise coming from me. A scribe. Uh, Mr. Theodorian, do you perchance have any sakma? I see. A man of culture has come to my drink stand. Now, <laughs> I wonder, is it is it uh, feasible that they would have sakma in some... I don't like, know. How small is this town, Jamie? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I said it was pretty small. So Probably I, not. <laughs> I guess probably not. Sir, I hate to disappoint you in this manner, but unfortunately... That drink is far beyond my means at this current time. But perhaps at the end of the Star Jubilee, things will be different. I, why I did not bring any Sakma with me to share with anybody. Yes. Is there is there an order? Is there a shipment coming in? Uh, no, no. I just meant my 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 status, my my fame. Uh, perhaps will 
I, I should have been more clear. I won't literally have more drinks at the end of the show. I shouldn't have implied that. <laughs> hmm. Well, what drinks do you have, Mr. Theodorian? That's a great question. Um, we have... Have fun, bitch! Perhaps you can fix me up uh, one of your uh, lo- one of your local favorites, uh, preferably yes, something no. bubbly. <laughs> yeah, what would you recommend? Okay, no, you it. tell us what you have. I am, I am. My mind is racing to try to remember all the different <laughs> drinks we've talked about. No, tell me something I've never heard. I of. want something very local. <laughs> I want something that's only from here. <laughs> this is uh, this is a particular. Uh, uh, a local favorite of the village of Stephanie. We call it Boar's Head Liqueur. Ooh. Uh, and he, he pulls out a pitcher and he's pouring a couple of glasses. And you can see from the sign behind him that it's not terribly expensive. Everything's fine there. It's well within uh, your budget. Oh, I didn't ask. Now, were you both hoping for this particular drink? Sure. I, I, I'm all about trying new things and recording them down. Uh, there is no Sakma, so I think I will have whatever, whatever you give me at this point. <laughs> I, that's, that's just great. And he hands you guys the drinks and he says, I couldn't help but notice you seem to be travelers. Uh, yes, this is a small problem because, uh, I, uh, I don't have any money that might be useful here. <laughs> Do not worry, Theodorian. As a scribe, I, I have the funds to cover all traveling wages and he slips you some. Should I? Uh, should I give you Alan my? Parks. Should I give you my Trivian money, and we can do a bit of a currency <laughs> exchange? I don't know what the, I don't know what the exchange rate is right now. I'll cover the the things for the tonight, and then you'll just get me later. <laughs> wow! You just cover it later. This is I'm, truly. I'm you. <laughs> this is truly an example of world cultures coming together to help each other. I need to perhaps I'll use this in my next show. And he's like he's like jotting stuff down on like a shitty small piece of parchment and he like puts it back in his pocket. And then he gets you guys the drinks. I suppose I should ask you, um, Mr. Theodorian, what is uh what is your performance? Yes. Please tell us in as many details as possible. Of course. That's the only way I speak. Now of course. <laughs> or actually you don't have to because I'll see it later, but just give me a teaser. Okay, that's that's if, fair. If you may. You see, here's the thing. Uh, I, and you may have not you may have not guessed this, but I'm an actor. I run a one man show based on my uh, experiences and my hopes and dreams and what I see in the world, and then I turn that vision into art that can be shared by the people. This seems like it would be very difficult. Yeah, he pauses a little bit as if he's expecting some kind of reaction. <sighs> And if nothing happens, then he just kind of awkwardly, he's just like, so yeah. But we shall see with high anticipation. Now, could you, is there a, perhaps, per chances, a, a program of all of tonight's events? Oh, well, that's a great question. If you'd like to know more, uh, you can certainly talk to Maria. And he points to the woman who is sitting at that, like, sort of roughshod desk. Um, yeah. or you could talk to Gary himself. Uh, I promise you I came up with the character Gary before you named your character Garandel. <laughs> You're just going to have to take my word on that one. <laughs> um, and when he says Gary, he points to the very nervous, not nervous, but, um, like, like excitable, f- uh, sort of not, not even that. It's more just like he looks frazzled, like he has a mm. lot to do yes. and he's trying to get it all done quickly. He's like gotcha. running around. Um, uh, either one of them will be able to tell you more about this, uh, this storied 20th anniversary of the Star oh. Jubilee. Oh my. I, I also have a question which ends with, uh, asking if this, uh, has something starting with the letter P. Is there a prize? Fuck. Um. <laughs> could... Hey, I got an idea for you. Yeah, what's what that? What if the prize is whoever wins the Star Jubilee? Right. Gets sent to the Sun Festival. Oh, I can I like that though. Yeah. Well, of course there's a prize. Now, here's the thing. You see, whenever uh whenever anyone from this town wins the the Star Jubilee, they are provided with 
and all expenses paid, Voyage took Hosterine itself so they can participate in the Sun Festival. Well, I mean, at least they can they can audition. Uh, there, there's no guarantee. We're not we're not officially affiliated with them. You could say. Wow. People around here really like the Sun Festival. I don't know if that was clear. <laughs> yeah. Are you not gonna drink it? Okay, then I will drink it. <laughs> Um, my wife has just brought me a homemade white claw. Oh my goodness. Is that, wh- is that what Boris Head liqueur tastes like? It is now. Sure it is. Um, Boris Head liqueur is basically a white claw. Yeah, Boris Head liqueur now tastes like gin and club soda. For everyone who's keeping track of all of our fake alcohols. Yeah. Hmm? What is it? It's vodka and LaCroix. Oh, never mind. It's vodka and LaCroix. I lied. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, fun fact, that's our first guest on the show right there. It's your wife. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there it is. Her voice technically is on the recording, so yeah, that's it. It's there official. <laughs> wow. Only well, it took us this long. Uh, let's go, s- uh, my good f- traveling companion, Carton. Let us go and speak with Mariah. You seem interested in partaking in this jubilee. <laughs> uh, yes, it seems like a very good way to blow off uh, some steam and uh, and and have some good times after our after our journey. Really quick, I would like to ask you guys. Well, first of all, the first act is performing. Um, oh, it's, right now? Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of it's oh, kind of that thing where like like when people are coming in to a church, there's someone else doing a thing like while everyone's getting sit- seated and stuff. So it's not like, everyone stop, it's time for the duh. It's more just like, uh, kind of like a warm-up thing, you know? Sure. Mm. Well, I'm writing that shit down. Every Excellent. I, I'm already, I got my second scroll out for that. Like, I mean, let's go. For the, for the performances, I have a couple that I specifically want to talk about. Sure. Other than that, I don't have like 10 written down. So if you guys have any, uh... Oh, I got one. Oh, excellent, excellent. I was hoping you'd say that. So if you guys have anything in particular, (laughs) we can absolutely go for it. Um, Now, I need to ask. Yeah, sure. Before I I announce who I think should be competing. Sure thing, sure thing. In your mind, (laughs) timeline-wise, when does this take place? Is this this, same time? Does this happen concurrently with Night's Quest proper? Does it happen before Night's Quest proper? I I truly didn't worry about that at all. The only even tiny hint of overlap is that these people know about the Sun Festival. That's literally the only thing. I think because here's now my Uh what if this is taking place concurrent with season one, start of season one. Okay, and maybe and maybe. One of the people who compete in the Star Jubilee goes by the name of Um Shit. No! <laughs> At like the last second, I was like, is he going to say? No, nah, he probably wouldn't. And then you said it. <laughs> we finally know this This whole thing. This has origin just, story? This has been a ruse to get the origin story of Um Shit. Wow. This oh my where, God. This is where it comes from? You absolutely um, if, now if we can. do that. That spoils that spoils the whole contest because we know who's gonna win. <laughs> would you Would you rather save him for a round that isn't this kind of casual warm up round though? Oh, absolutely. He won't okay, be first, but he'll show up. Yeah, Carton is gonna Carton is gonna watch, kind of like side eyeing it um, as he makes his way as he kind of follows his nose to the food. Sure thing. Mm. Real quick, uh, before you guys talk to Maria, I was thinking like. I don't particularly need stats for this story. The only one I do want to use is awareness. So, okay. like, based on who you guys are, what are we thinking for a modifier? Because I'm thinking just a regular D20 dice roll. And I, I totally, if if you guys think, like, well, I think he would have a plus one or a plus four. Like, I'm I'm totally cool with that. Uh, I'm going to say, just yeah. for his profession, mm-hmm. he'd probably have, like, a, a high intelligence. So, that means a high awareness. So, maybe, like, sure. five. Yeah, so man. needs to be aware to, like, write shit down. Yeah. I'd probably just plus two. Okay. Okay. So now that we have those for sure, you don't need to roll it yet. Uh, the opening show is... I don't know. I don't have one in particular that'd be great for this. Uh, so if juggler. anybody... What's that? A juggler. Ooh. It's a juggler. Just um, girl-fashioned juggler. Hell yeah. 
Okay. That boar's head is um something. It's it's <laughs> it's strong like like a boar, I guess. I mean, you you asked for sukma, so if <laughs> yeah. you should be prepared for really anything. <laughs> I had my standards set very low because I wasn't in Tariv and I got donkey kicked with my with my <laughs> unexpectedness of how strong the drink was. All right, uh, I rolled for the juggler and I rolled I rolled a six. Um, so oh, I no. imagine his show isn't going super great, uh, <laughs> which is good because people aren't the hundred percent paying attention. They're just kind of filing right, in. food. Some people are sitting down. Some people are grabbing food and shit. Um, mm. so even though he's dropping some of these, um, quite a bit. It's not a huge, uh, big deal. It's all right. Buddy. Is he good at playing it off like it was his intention the whole time? Great question. See, Jamie, now understanding the great thing about dice is it prevents you from having to actually make a decision as a storyteller. Like ah, whatever the <laughs> dice fucking says. Uh, nah, he sucks. Uh, he's the worst. Nah, I hear you. Um, I'm gonna say no. He's not good at playing it off because he rolled a five. So maybe mm. it's that thing where he's like. Okay, okay, wait. Uh no, no, that one didn't count. Just wait, just wait. And then he like does it again, and it's kind of it's kind of hard to watch actually. It's so comfortable. Yeah, no, it's not it's not great. Garandel wants to talk to Maria. All He's right. Like, Excuse excellent. me. Oh, M- madam. Oh, yes. Hello. How can I help yes. you? I would like to know all the things that are happening tonight. Oh god. Wow. Uh I mean, well, you're you're in luck. Um it's it's a rather short list uh for the moment. There's a fellow who's going to be putting on a one-man show. Uh, he was very excited about that. Theodorian, yes? Yeah, yeah. I have oh. made his acquaintances. Oh, my goodness. I I, I kind of I like him. I mean, he seems like an okay... He's just a bit dramatic, you know? It's fun to listen to him talk. Um, let's see. Are there... I do not mean to interrupt. Are there re- repeat performers? I hear this is the 20th anniversary. So are there it those is. that repeat every year? Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's a couple of people who are, you know, they're from this town. They have a lot of pride in the in the the jubilee. Um, they aren't particularly concerned with winning. Crops magic is surprisingly popular. It's it's a little strange to me, but uh, like making crops very quickly go rotten and then back again. That's hmm. sometimes people call it farm magic. I'm I'm not really <laughs> sure what all that's about. There is going to be an archery performance. Uh, we have to get the... Uh, what do you even call it? It's like a target, but it's got the angled thing, so it like so it like doesn't fall over, you know? Uh, something horse? Saddle horse? Is that... Now, I do need to go back. I may be totally off base with that. Yeah. So you're telling me you have found magic that can cause crops to grow faster? <laughs> is, this, is, is this way too overpowered and... Uh, the the writer didn't realize it until now. <laughs> You've cracked Oops. food magic. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! I must tell. I must tell everyone well, I, about this. I I feel like I should make it clear, sir. Um, it's not it's not like creating food or making food better in any way. Really, it's just kind of ruining it for a second and then uh <laughs> bring and then undoing that spell. Um, that's pretty much I all it is. To, I will watch with. Great expectations. Yeah, yeah, certainly. For the um, greater com- magic community. Yeah, I, I'm i intrigued by... Uh, it's it's nice to hear that someone's so excited about the show. What's what's your name, please? I am Garandel. I will not be competing. Oh, merely okay. Merely spectating with vigor. All right, well, it was it was uh, nice to meet you. My name is Maria. Uh, uh, and then she kind of pauses. She's like, um, just Maria. Um, so yeah, thank you. That was... Uh, I appreciate that. That was nice. Your name shall go in in the records for all history, Maria. Oh, wow! That's that's pretty exciting. I'm still pantomiming. I don't know fucking why. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. It's fun to me. <laughs> oh, I meant to say this earlier, but I forgot. So this is, as you've heard, this is the twentieth anniversary. Um, one fun thing about this year's jubilee. I don't know if you've noticed uh, the torches around the town square, but a particularly wealthy patron has actually decided to be our benefactor this year. Benefactor. Boy, I always have a hard time pronouncing that word. Boy, someone told me his name, but I forgot it. It's it's a mouthful. But yeah, he was really excited to donate some of his money and stuff towards making to, uh, this year's show. Uh, the words he used were having more flair and excitement. He keeps saying uh, smashing success. He really likes that phrase, too. Um, he's fun. I don't, I don't really know... 
I must know more about this benefactor. Oh, I'm sure you'll meet him. Uh, God, what is his name? Hey, uh, hey, Jehoshaphat? And she calls over to, uh, the kind of scruffy looking farmer guy who was, uh, conversing with some people. And he comes over and he's just like, uh, yeah, what, uh, what is it? And she's like, oh, I was hoping, um, do you remember the name of the guy who, like, put all this on this year? Like, with the, the big torches and, like, the extra money and stuff? He's like, oh, of course I do. His name was Bombadiglio. And she's like, that was it, Bombadiglio. Bob, that's... that's the guy. I'm sure you'll meet oh, him yes. soon. Now, I gotta ask, do you do you have Bombadiglio's backstory already? I do, actually. <laughs> okay, all right. I was gonna, like, say that I knew who he was. Oh, yes, I I have heard of this man. <laughs> oh, good. Pompadiglio. <laughs> that would actually cause a lot of problems if you've heard of Pompadiglio. <laughs> oh, I, I, so I can't hear him? I don't know who he is? I, I I think it would be for the best if you don't know who he okay. is. Then in that case, never heard of this man before, but I shall never forget that name. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. Um, he's, he's real excited because he thinks more people are going to hear about the occasion this year and his reputation will go up and, mm. oh, and of course the town is, uh, going to pay him back for, you know, kind of being a sponsor for this year. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think he's actually doing the opening ceremonies once our, once our juggler friend is done over there. Wonderful. Carton is trying to find something to eat. He's following his nose. Sure thing. Sure thing. The food stall you arrive at. It's the biggest one, and it definitely looks like there should be someone manning it. There should be someone behind the thing, like, ready to make all this happen, right? But there's no one there at the moment. And um, I assume you wait for at least a couple seconds. Yeah, I think uh, I think he, like, kind of puts... Is, is there, like, a little counter that sticks out from the for window? Sure. Yes. Okay, he, he kind of puts his hands on it and, like, leans in to, like, the kitchen area and kind of okay. looks around and goes, Hello... I would like to I would like to eat some food please. A person um the kind of frazzled looking gentleman that we've talked about a few times. He doesn't appear from inside the cart. He actually like comes kind of huffing and walking very quickly from outside and then he sees you is, and is he's this like Gary. This is Gary. Um and he kind of <laughs> awkwardly like makes his way into the cart, then comes back to the front counter and he's like <sighs> All right, hello. Um, what uh, what can I do for you? I would like to eat some food, please. Well, you know what? That uh, that was rather a foolish question. Now that I think about it, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, and do you need a moment to catch your breath, good <laughs> sir? Damn, I... Mickey Mouse is in this village. Oh, I do. Uh, I do apologize. I've just been. Uh, it's part of my job to to oversee a bunch of. Uh, smaller tasks, running the Jubilee, you know, some backstage work, making sure everything on the stage is getting set up, and making sure people aren't sitting too close to the stage. We've had people get get uh, hit in the head by juggling balls in previous years. Uh, let's see here. And he goes back, and he whips up some food, and it never even occurred to me to think of food. So this <laughs> is going to be a... Welcome to my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> he whips you the up. struggle. Uh... It's it's a plate of some some greens on one side, some pretty simple like uh, some veggies, just some beans and carrots and stuff. And on the other side is it's like a I'm suddenly drawing a blank on the word for like it's like a burger, but it's um the pieces are toasted and it's not like a burger of meat. It's um oh my god, I'm gonna sound like an idiot. Wow, it's not even that complicated. It's just like... It's not a burger of meat. The pieces are toasted. <laughs> what could this food item be? I'm, I'm such an idiot. Like, Is, uh, is it beef? Uh, oh, you is know what? Pork? I'm just thinking of like... I guess I'm just thinking of like melts. Like when you have a menu and some of it is burgers and the rest of it is like, oh, these are our other sandwiches and melts. So it's it's like oh. a melt, right? It's, um, we'll say it's, it's just beef. <laughs> It's a beef melt. Beef melt. It's just beef. <laughs> it's a beef melt, and that is a Village of Stephanie favorite. I can guarantee you, Carton has never eaten the like in his life. <laughs> I think he takes the plate, and he's looking at it, and he's like, how do I eat this? I think this is when Garandel shows up, yeah, yeah. and he sees that you're you know handed this sandwich, and knowing Carton's abilities, Garandel wide eyes looks at him and says Carton I need you to try your magic on this meal oh my goodness you can do sand magic yes 
Yes, and he kind of like looks at the like the sand pouch. I mean, we usually have a a, a rule about not using magic on the on the food, but uh, this is a sandwich. This is a witch, and he puts it back on the counter and passes <laughs> away. Oh, I think I think I get it. We shall crack food magic another day. I'm still very hungry. I would like to eat this as long as it will not cast spells on me. It's not going to cast spells. Why? Uh, I feel like we should start over. This is just a regular meal. Um, I didn't mean to imply that it would uh, cast any kind of magic on you. This uh, is not a witch. This is not, not a, witch. a witch. It's it's not. Jamie, okay. I love how that was Mickey Mouse at first, and then it went into Morty from Rick and Morty, and then you caught it, and it went back up to Mickey Mouse. It It isn't actually supposed to be Mickey Mouse either, but sure, I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> it's Morty Mouse. Sure, um, we'll call, that's what that's what we'll call him. Okay, um, Gary de Morty. So Mouse. he he gingerly takes the plate back, and he's staring at this like open faced sandwich. As you, I, I should have said this earlier. Um, there's a couple things that kind of stand out about Gary. His vision doesn't seem great. Like he's squinting and trying to look really closely a lot, pretty much all the time. In fact, he's squinting or he's like moving his head a little closer than you think. He does have a pair of glasses, but he very clearly doesn't like using them. Like, they're resting on top of his head. Ah, Gary, I see that you are a learned man. This ailment of yours is one that afflicts many of my, uh, compatriots back at the world's memory. Oh my, oh, 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 oh my goodness, the, the, now the world's memory, that's something I don't believe I know, uh, anything about. It is simply the place that scribes take all of their findings. It is a mountain in the north. Far past the Gatan Desert, where we take all of our writings Gatan and our Desert. findings. There's a grand library with the whole history of the world. Well, that's, uh... And I, your I name suppose. and this meal shall be in it. I suppose I should take that as a compliment. Uh, much, much appreciated, good sir. Pretty much everything finds its way there, but you will be there too. <laughs> way to devalue him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we try to record Everything. Can you guys please roll an awareness check? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, 23. Cool. That's a 7. You rolled a 23? Sorry, 22. Damn. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't uh, know shit. I'm still trying to figure out how to eat the sandwich. That's okay. <laughs> Garandel, um, you noticed that, like, I know I said this before, but these torches are really bright. Like, hmm. like in a way that doesn't really seem terribly normal. It's not just hard to look at them. It's almost like uh, looking at the t- uh, at the stage at all is actually a little uncomfortable. Like they're they're brighter than it seems like they should be, uh, which is especially weird because they're not huge flames or crazy hot. They're just very very bright. Hmm. And they're just around the stage. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Now, my good friend, now Gary. I, yes, am, I, I, I have great questions about these torches. I guess you could call torches. it that. It's a, it's a little bit moving fast in my opinion, but that's fine. Fine then. I shall redact that. The person I have met named Gabby. Oh, oh okay. Well, I regret that decision. <laughs> what is with these torches? I feel like they're distracting from the stars, which is in the name of this such event. Oh, you know, I, uh, I, I kind of feel the same way. Um, They're, uh... Those were a big part of the uh, the sponsorship that uh, Bomba Diglio brought for us. Uh, he, he this insisted. witch is very tasty. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you like it, sir. Although, again, not not a witch. I don't know how to how to make that he, clearer. He called it the witch. I don't think I did. Um, not you. Uh, well, not you. I think it. What well, you called it a melt, which is what witches do. So I think it really. It, <laughs> it, are Are you telling me that witches are real? Yes. I was that privy to this information, sir. That uh, makes me somewhat <laughs> confused and concerned. <laughs> Garandel like gestures to like just around him like you know magic is real right? Well, I, I suppose the word witch I I usually hear it in the context of of of, of ghouls and monsters in the night coming to to you know steal from you and 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 kidnap children and all that. And- <laughs> I don't know if witches still kidnap children these days, but Carton is just nodding <laughs> knowingly. I don't believe I've ever I've ever met a witch in real life. Yes, I don't know of many people who. Have met a witch in the past as well. Well, now you've got me. Now you've got it. me wondering if if anyone of the of the uh, the female persuasion who uses magic would they technically be called a witch? No, it's it's all about their their stature, uh, what type of 
Which is our, a very specific thing. Oh, I see. I see. It's not a male female thing. Uh, but yeah, back to the um the torches. Uh, yes, the torches. These fascinating torches. As as I said, it's not it's not my first choice, but uh, I'm I'm no longer in charge of the uh the occasion here. I'm no longer in charge of the the jubilee itself. So there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I'm mainly running some uh some smaller chores and backstage. This uh, seems like a bad such. deal for you. You used to be in charge, and now you are only exclusively doing all of the other jobs. Oh yes, that's uh, that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, I was uh, I mean, it's it's my own fault, really. It's uh, there was a bit of an incident. I, I... My growing acquaintance, Gary, have you been in charge all these past twenty years? I was until uh, until I believe it was six years ago. He looks a little bit uncomfortable talking about this. You Cause... do not look your age. I will say this. Oh my goodness, what? That's that's just about the nicest thing I believe anyone has ever said to me. Um, but So uh, did you start running this when you were born, or or what? What? <laughs> You're older oh. than 20 years? My goodness. Oh, I see I see the confusion. Uh, many people uh, mistake my voice for a, a sign of young age, but the truth is I'm actually 53. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I oh also well. drew this conclusion. I'm glad you made some sort of uh, a clarification. I have a high awareness, but not that high. <laughs> It seems as if if there was someone whose job it was to describe me more clearly, they they clearly forgot to add that detail. <laughs> or if it was someone's job to pay attention and listen, yeah, they yeah. did not. <laughs> Only the records will show. No, I don't think I mentioned anything about that. It didn't even occur to me. But you seem... What happened six years ago? That seems like it's an important detail to what oh, happened. Oh, goodness. I, that's... Uh... I, unfortunately, that's a bit of a sad... Uh, well, not a sad story, exactly. Just more of an, an embarrassing story. Um, I'd, I'd really rather uh, not talk about... Oh, look, the, the show is beginning. Perhaps we could talk about that instead. <laughs> um, and you guys you guys do turn around when he says <laughs> yes. that. And um, there's like a pretty crazily dressed man walking out onto the stage. He like has his arms up and he's like pointing to people who recognize him in the crowd and people are cheering and clapping like this is definitely the real beginning of the show right carton is clapping and cheering oh dope okay um i'm gonna say purely from this man this man is very important i'm gonna say purely from context you guys can figure out this is bomb of diglio he he looks Mm. so excited he's like grinning he's uh doing like little dance steps as he walks out onto the stage he's thrilled right and he uh, and he says loudly enough that pretty much everyone can hear him. He says, "Well, welcome to the twentieth anniversary of the Star Jubilee. I'm so happy to see you all this evening. Let's uh, let's get our festivities started with a little bit of a light show." And he actually pulls out a wand and he begins casting what is pretty clearly a little bit of illusion magic it's nothing crazy it's just basically it's some dancing lights in my mind the the D cantrip i think it's just called dancing lights um that's what came to mind when i was uh thinking about this so basically there's just some really colorful illusory lights that are like doing cool patterns and dancing and they're like going over people's heads once in a while and uh sometimes they like brush right up against the edges of the torch and they almost fade away completely but yeah, this is clearly like the beginning of the show and he's not competing himself, but he is doing a little bit of a cool opening ceremony thing. And he's like, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to introduce our performers. And uh, the first person actually comes out on stage. Now, while, while the first performer is coming on, I lean over to Gary. Now, Gary, I must ask, what do you know about this Bombadiglio fellow? Is he from the king's court? Is he a... Uh, is he a, a mage from afar? Is he from your town, your village, of Stephanie? Well, uh, I don't, I don't rightly know very much about him, unfortunately. I don't believe he's from the king's court. He's, uh, he's more of a, a, a traveling. Well, he calls himself a magician, which seems like a, a long-winded way of saying, you know, mage. But he likes the term. He's, he seems pretty excited about those things. He's, as you can see, he, uh, he outfitted our. Our jubilee with uh, some extra accoutrements and made things a little more uh, pizzazz. That's another word he likes to use. And Gary doesn't look thrilled while he's saying this. He's not outwardly like, oh, I hate that guy. But he is a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of that. And he's just like, unfortunately, I, I, I don't really have much more knowledge than that. 
So, so to clarify, this man showed up out of nowhere uh, and said, "I want to, I want to do the show this year." And everyone was just kind of okay with that, even well, though we don't really know anything about this man. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened. I, again, I, although, like you said, not everyone was on board with that plan, but uh, they're not they're not really going to listen to me so much. I, uh, I'm not in great standing with you know uh, because of. Well, uh, Oh my god. Oh goodness. I Oh, uh, well, fine. Uh I've had a or few Or you just have the first performers show up. <laughs> oh yeah, no, the first performer is definitely showing up. The first group is just a big dancing group. Um there's like four or five people. Most of them are a little bit older. They're clearly in this to have a lot of fun and kind of like a village pride type thing, you know. They're just mm. excited to have a person over over on the side of the stage playing a uh, a lute and they're playing like like one of the old songs of their village, you know? So they're just doing a little mm-hmm. bit of a jig. It just kind of gets the crowd happy and clapping along. It's not like, look at us, we're going to win the competition. It's just kind of more of a, you know, more of a fun yeah. hometown thing. Cartan, will you be entering in this competition? I don't I don't really know what I would do as a... As a do not do not talk with at- the, the food in your mouth, Cartan. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know. This witch is very tasty. I think I might have said this. <laughs> I I don't really know what I would be doing as a talent to make entertainment for people. Your sand magic. But this is commonplace. No, not here, Cartan. That is very strange in these parts. Oh. It's true. I've I've heard you say sand magic a few times, and I, I still don't know what on earth you're talking about, but I didn't want to ask because I thought it might be rude. This young man, and you're young compared to me, this young man over here doesn't even think he... I don't even think he believes in magic. Are you Are you talking about me? Yes. Why Why would you think that? I, I've given you no reason. Oh, I, I was unfamiliar with the terminology of what witch means, but doesn't mean I, I don't know magic is real. Show him. Show him, Cartan. The guy, <laughs> Bob Diglio, just did like a little lights magic thing, so... Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> Uh yeah, so I mean Carton, uh he puts down his uh his now uh, his very witch. much lighter plate right. of food. Of course. And uh he he opens up the the pouch on his his hip gestures and some uh, you know, he he moves his he moves his hands and his fingers a little bit and a stream of sand kind of comes up out of the pouch and wraps its way around him and uh pools in his hand and starts uh, forming into different shapes and and like a little tornado and then it's a star and then it's a bowl um and it's cool. all just shifting sand i think i think gary uh sees that and his reaction is just kind of like i mean I'm, i i don't really know what to say to be honest that's that's uh I, I suppose that's what i was expecting when you talked about sand magic uh, you see this is expected and commonplace there's no reason for me to go into the competition <laughs> no 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 no, no. Okay. I, I, I meant that was it, it was exciting. It was uh, uh, particularly unusual. I didn't, I, I didn't know what you were going to be able to do with in a place with you know not much sand around. Um, I think uh, Cartan looks around at the surroundings and he goes, "Oh, oh, I think, I think maybe I have an idea." And he runs over <laughs> to do, yes. to enter the competition. That first act is playing. Can you guys roll awareness again? Yeah. Yep. Well, that one wasn't as good. Only ten. Okay. Thirteen. Let's see. Uh, no, you guys don't notice anything this time. I am going to go back and really quick say, when you saw Bombadiglio up on the stage, he actually had some weird kind of glasses. They looked pretty much normal, except the lenses of the glasses were weirdly dark. And Mm. you probably haven't seen anything like that before. It's just, it just looked very peculiar that someone would be walking around with uh, glasses on that have this weird, like, tinted... At night. Yeah, especially at night. Uh, hmm. So, that, and for that reason, you can't, like, it's a little tougher to see his eyes. And the other thing I wanted to mention about him is that he just has a lot of layers, like, like robes covering him, you know? Oh. Um, so he's got quite a bit, a lot of clothes on. The person who approaches you is actually the person who, in your head, has just been, like, the farmer. But Maria called him Jehoshaphat. Yes. Um, and he is kind of grumbling to himself, and he walks over towards you guys, and he says, No, uh, I, I believe I heard. Shoot, sorry. By this point, I think Gary has, like, left to go work on stuff uh, away sure. from the food stall. And that's when Jehoshaphat comes up to you guys. And he's like, I believe I, I, I heard you folks 
asking around about uh, what happened here six years ago. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yes, I think I think perhaps I will stay for this story before I go to sign up. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, Jake. <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of a bunch of different things here. <laughs> no, this is very interesting. I would like to hear this. <laughs> and uh, he looks pretty he looks pretty frustrated. And he's like, well, well, maybe you'll uh, you'll actually listen to what I have to say. Unlike some people, uh, you see, during the Star Jubilee six years ago, when uh, when our pal Gary was running things. There was a young man who fancied himself, uh, you know, a pretty fun, exciting magician who, well, he came up onto the stage and he had a couple of animals brought up on stage with him, uh, and I thought that was pretty peculiar. Before I go any further, I need the two of you guys to tell me what are the two animals that were brought up on stage? Uh, Mistwalker. Holy shit. Okay, uh I maybe maybe like smaller, maybe like farm village animals. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh chicken. Okay, cool. One's a chicken. And we'll just go with a regular old pig. Okay, a chicken and a pig. Got it. No, a pig. <laughs> a pig. <laughs> what is a pig, Nathan? Are you doing this? Are you making this happen? Yeah. Okay. okay. A a pig is like a pig. Uh-huh. But the difference is they're longer. Okay. They're a little bit... They're not super skinny, but they're a little leaner. Okay. And they've got awkward legs. So they're okay. like longer Doxons legs. Of, pigs. of course. <clears throat> but uh, still no neck. And everyone in the village of Stephanie knows this. They're like the most common animal to see. Very common village animal. You see, uh, he brought up a couple of animals up onto the stage, and he, well, he, uh, made like he was gonna do some kind of magic, you know, and he was excited to show us, uh, you won't believe your eyes, and that sort of thing, and, uh, he started casting a spell, and, well, I suppose, uh, Gary, being the, the Jubilee supervisor, he must have been concerned that something was going wrong, because he ran up and he tried to stop him. Uh, unfortunately, the the magic went all all nuts, so crazy haywire, and uh, there was a a bright flash of light that lasted uh like a good fifteen seconds. It was a very bright light. Everyone had to close their eyes and wait a bit, uh, or else they would have uh, gotten a pretty bad shock to being partially blind. I assume. Unfortunately, when the light faded, uh, part of the stage had been blown up, like a bunch of crazy magic had gone off, and uh. Well, that poor chicken and pig, they'd been, uh, sort of coddled together. Uh, it was not a good situation. <laughs> like fused? Yeah, it, you, you hate to see it, you really do. <laughs> but can I see it? No, no, certainly not. <laughs> uh, our friend Gary... <laughs> no, you'd hate it. <laughs> after the rest of the event was cancelled, our friend Gary, uh, took it out in the woods to, uh, dispose of it, as it were, in, uh, in a humane way. Uh, suffice it to say, that wizard was banned from ever joining this competition again and well our friend gary wasn't wasn't allowed to run it anymore either who's been running it the past few years then uh that's a great question <laughs> uh so not gary not and not, not gary. bombadiglio yet that's so correct just... bombadiglio just uh he just arrived this year the last uh let's see the five years preceding this one the, the town council just Yes. Some people who aren't terribly important to the story. Of course. Non-important. So we won't ask more questions. I think I lean over to, to Carton. Carton, I have a theory. What is this theory, my friend? I think that wizard from six years ago is Bombadiglio. Do you, do you say that loud enough for him to hear you? Uh, I say that loud enough for Carton to hear me. Okay. It just seems like Bombadiglio is sketchy AF. I don't know what this means, but Bamba Diglio definitely seems <laughs> As suspicious. Fire. As fire, because fire is suspicious. That's what AF stands for. Yes, as fire. Maybe maybe we should ask him. Ask Bamba Diglio. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> like, wow. I didn't swear until right. Fuck it. Yeah. So so was was all of that definitely not able to be heard by uh Jehoshaphat? I mean he could have heard it. I mean, it wasn't like okay. super whispery, but uh, then he probably says, "No, now that's that. That seems that seems ridiculous. Uh, 
Bombadiglio looks completely different. I like to think we'd remember uh, what the person looked like who we kicked out of town. Uh, mm-hmm. He had this he had this big amulet that he was using for his powers, and 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 yes. his face looked different. How could that? That couldn't be the same person. That, Have ah. you seen Bombadiglio's eyes? Well, no, but that's mm-hmm. that, that's a very impolite thing to ask a man. I'm not just gonna demand he take his weird uh, dark glasses <laughs> off. Oh, this is hogwash, and he he kind of stomps away, muttering no, to himself. No, this is boar's head. <laughs> hogwash is a different drink, not very good at all. <laughs> As he's walking away, someone else like kind of calls out at him, like, "Oh, are you telling them more of your uh, more of your conspiracies?" And he says, "Ah, hush up." No, actually, we were telling him our conspiracies. <laughs> And when when the person yells at him about conspiracies, he says, "Oh, now that that reminds me. Uh, don't don't be heading out into the woods. It's not safe. That's not something most people need to worry about because we're all here in the center of town with the all this stuff. But uh, what what to be careful of the woods? There's there's strange things happening. Strange creatures about. Like a chicken pig. <laughs> I think it's still out there. Like a pigan. <laughs> a pigan. <laughs> a chig." <laughs> No, I like Pegan better. A cheek? A Pegan. Because it sounds like Pagan, but... Oh, no. A Pegan. He says, all of the things you've said to me are, are completely ridiculous. I'm, I'm finished talking to you, and he stomps away. A classic small-town village people thinking simple ideas are ridiculous. I had no intention of going into the woods, but now maybe I feel like I would like to go into the woods. <laughs> I mean, we were just in the woods earlier today. I mean, I guess we were on the road, but... Is this town surrounded by woods? Uh, on one side, yeah. Okay. I guess, no, we weren't in them. Okay, I'm I'm not saying you have to do this, but you did talk about talking to Maria, Um, and I yeah. want to make sure we don't forget that, because I threw a lot yeah, of shit at you. Yeah, he's gonna go sign up. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, I'd like to participate in the contest with my special fancy magic. Uh, Maria is, is thrilled to hear that. She's like, oh my goodness, that's, well, that's wonderful. Um, let me just, uh, did she meet you earlier? No. Yeah, we talked, well, I talked to her. She met Garendel. Yeah. Um, she's like, well, uh, my name is Maria. D- just, just, just Maria is probably good. Um, yeah, and she pulls out this parchment and she's like, um, could I jot down your name, please? Yes, my name is Cartan. Oh, uh, Cartan. Just Cartan. Same as Okay. You. Well, then <laughs> we have something in common then. Thanks, uh... Well, that's great. Um, I'll put down magic performance, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll actually be up in just a few uh, a few acts here. There's again, as Perfect. you can see, there's not a laundry list of people over here. We're working with some smaller numbers than usual. Why is that? Well, I suppose it could be that uh, not everyone in town is completely thrilled about uh, you know Bombadiglio kind of buying. Well, not buying exactly, but money was certainly involved. About kind of becoming the patron for the whole event. Some people would would rather see, you know, our council or or Gary, although he's not terribly popular after that whole nastiness. Yes, yes, the pegan. The pegan. Oh, the pegan, the chicken. Oh goodness, that's a much better name than what I was calling it. <laughs> uh, yes, I was also very confused why uh, you're down would elect a very strange man who you've never met to uh, completely uh, strong arm your your fun times. Well, I mean, it's not like we put him in charge of the government or anything. He's just kind of running the uh, the fun, goofy times, uh, fun music performing show. Where is this Bamba Diglio right now? She kind of looks over to the stage. I think he is, uh... You know what? He's just chatting with people. He's probably eating some food. No, you were just at the food cart. He's having some drinks. Yeah. And he's chatting with people. I'm suspicious as fuck of Maria's last name now. Because you <laughs> okay. did the same thing twice. And I think she's her last name's important, damn it. But I have no reason to ask her. Carton has no concept of last names, so he doesn't <laughs> okay. really give a shit. Dope, okay. Well, I guess, yeah, so far, none of our people have had a last name, but... Well, no one has no one has asked nice. anyone what their last name is. I guess I... Maybe, maybe I should have just had him say it right away, but... Oh, well. Because both times you're like, Maria... Just that for now, and I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is it? First time, I'm like, cool. And then the second time, I was like, mm. The act is definitely over. I think the next act up is um, Theodorian, and he just ooh, launches ooh. into, like, this very dramatic, it is like, 
what is the human soul? Like, that kind of thing. There's, like, a lot of gesticulating and, like, miming that other people are there, but the way he's talking makes it seem like they're just, like, other facets of his own heart, and it's super metaphorical and, like, but truly, what is the meaning of this existence and all that kind of stuff? I am going to roll for it. Oh, damn, I rolled an 18. I was going to say people are kind of bored, but I guess he's doing a good job. I guess people are into it. Maybe it's like they, since he's from the town, people have heard it before. But this time, he's, re- yeah. he's really got something. There's there's a little something extra. Cartan is like, while we have not shared experiences, I feel as though you know me and I know you. <laughs> Garandel's like, I have recorded the stories of many people's lives, but somehow in this short performance, he has summarized them all. Wow. He, he He's basking in the audience's attention. Um, yes. And he knows, he knows it's going over well, and he's just thrilled about that. He's so, right. like, in the moment, you know? Could y'all do another awareness check, please? Yes. 16. 12. Okay. Uh, you both notice... Bamba Diglio, because you can see him, right? He doesn't look... He's he's not, like, like doing secret deals and, like, handing people shady shit. He just looks a little anxious. Like, he's glancing around a lot. It is weird you can see that, even with the dark glasses. But he's not even being very subtle. It's like he's at a place where he's supposed to meet someone, and they haven't shown up yet. He just kind of mm. keeps looking around like he's impatient. Hmm. I think I'll go up to him now. I'm going to act like I'm getting another drink. Okay. And and then as I walk up to him, I go, Oh, excuse me. I don't believe we have become of acquaintances. No, I don't believe we have either. So good to meet someone from out of town. I oh, I didn't mean to assume down. anything. I apologize. That was <laughs> rude. No, you are correct. We are both from out of town. Both. Oh, and there's another uh, newcomer over here. It's delightful to meet you both. My name is Bombadiglio, as I'm sure you might have already guessed. No, I was inferring that you were from out of town. I don't know if I was coy enough in that. Oh, <laughs> well, that's, uh, I suppose that's true. I have a bit Tell of a... Tell me uh, all your life secrets. It's my job. That is the strangest thing I've ever been asked, I think. Um, I'm a scribe. It's for religious reasons. Oh, Mr. Bombadiglio. Well. You are not sick little ill man from six years ago who fused a pig and a chicken together, to are you? To make a pigan. Uh, Bombadiglio freezes. Bombadiglio is, like, sweating a little bit. <laughs> we did it, boys! I <laughs> <laughs> five carton. Got him! <laughs> Bombadiglio is like, I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't sound like something I would do. Carton mm-hmm. immediately, ah, uh, I see. We are sorry to have wasted your time. <laughs> this man is telling no, no. strange stories. Carton, Carton, no. No, Carton. Stop. No, we, we, that, listen. Mr. Bombaladiglio. Yes? I want you to know, it is not my position to intervene in the world I am observing. So whatever weird shit you have planned tonight, <laughs> please... Feel free to still do it. I don't know what you're planning on doing with the torches or if you're bringing the Pegan back. But, like, we aren't going to tell anyone. I want to be able to tell the story correctly later on so Wait. people know what was the motive for the weird wizard. And I'm like, they kicked him out. Wait, why would he know about the Pegan if he is not the man from six he years is, ago? He is the man. He's just not. You see him sweating. I, Do you see him sweating? I'm These torches swe- are very bright and hot. I that, that Yes, that's why I'm sweating. It's because of the torches. As you've noticed, they're very bright and hot. <laughs> Clearly, our awareness difference is showing. I think one of the people in the crowd kind of overhears you a little bit. And I think that person, that woman looks at you and looks at him. And she's like, no, that ain't him. He looks totally different. He looks totally different. There, you see, this whole thing is put to rest. He is not the same person. He looks not the same. <laughs> was that a play on words about looks? Was that what this is about? Because I love puns. It's part of my religion. Who are you asking that? The lady. I mean, no, I don't I don't believe so. Mr. Diglio, can I call you that? Uh, certainly, yes. It's a strange way of dividing up the syllables, but uh, I was going to say, is not? his first name Bamba? Like, what do you... <laughs> I assume that's what the case was. 
First name Bamba, last name Diglio. <laughs> what a baller last name. Yeah. I, I like it very much. Some people also call me Bomb Diggity. Bomb Diggity. <laughs> That's a fun little nickname. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. The Bomb Diggity. Mr. A. Adam Bomb. Yes. I gotta ask. Sure. What is? Where did you get your spectacular spectacles? Oh, these? And he takes off his glasses. And oh. underneath he looks like a totally normal dude. Well, shit. And the woman says, see? His face looks totally different than uh, than the person we were talking about earlier. Mm. I would have no way of knowing this. I have not seen this man from six years that's, ago. That's, 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 why, that's why the woman said it. <laughs> that's why she's no, here. She said, to... see? He oh. looks totally different from oh, the other guy. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, and he kind of examines the glasses and he's like, well, these... Uh, these are simply to help take the edge off a little bit around uh, bright lights. Uh, as you can see, we've brought in some some pretty tough... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? Harsh lights? Yeah, yeah, harsh lights. That works. Okay. And then he puts his glasses well, back on. Hmm. Cartan uh, senses that he's he's going to be on stage in a little bit, and so uh-huh. he uses uh, a bit of sand magic and, and fashions himself some dark glasses to wear. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh my goodness, that is, uh... Well, I'll admit, I thought I was the only one who'd come up with the idea for these, but uh, that's pretty spectacular, my dear friend. Do not be mistaken, this is definitely your idea. I am simply stealing it for my own comfort. It it really seems like this very small, forgettable village of Stephanie has a lot of breakthroughs. (laughs) (laughs) I, I remind you, I'm not actually from here. That's right. Where are you from? Oh, you know, I've done a bit of traveling around. But you have to be from somewhere. I am from the town of Hidgety? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know that place. Yeah, that's, that's legit. Is this a very large and notable town? There is more note to it than Stephanie, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's where I'm originally from. I've been doing some traveling over the last few years, that's for sure. Okay. I'm sure there's more to what you've got going on. How could this man have been here six years ago if he was traveling? <laughs> yeah, I'm still not so sure about that. It seems all very convenient. This man Bombadiglio is an enigma. <laughs> Cartan, I think it's your turn to perform. Oh, yeah, the last the last act is totally done and waiting for the next person to come up on stage. Oh, and uh, he, he quick, like, jumps up on stage. Uh, his act consists of... Oh, I suppose I should roll. Oh... Oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Okay. I mean, it's a seven. Oh, boy. Uh, I think mayhaps uh, he's he's quite nervous. And uh, so I think he jumps up on stage. And even with the dark glasses, I think the dark glasses are actually hindering him because now he can see the audience. And oh, he no. realizes he's, he's never used sand magic as a performance art before. It's purely utilitarian. So he his original intention was to create uh, colored like lenses to put over the super bright torches to oh, make cool. like, like stained glass like lights and stuff happen but what ends up happening is uh he creates these squares of colored glass that then break so he has like momentary like rainbow effects like glittering over the stage oh neat okay but he it's not his intention to do so so he's like just kind of flustered like moving his hands around and there's just like things breaking and crashing around him (laughs) uh so there is a spectacle but it's not the one he intended yeah that that checks out i think uh the crowd is equally parts like wildly entranced by this new weird thing they've never seen before. Also sort of confused because it doesn't seem to be going quite the right way <laughs> and sort of like unimpressed, I guess. Uh, I hate to say it, but yeah. I think at the end, like once everything stops and the last bits of glass are tinkling to the ground, he goes, this was all intentional. And then he gets off the stage. <laughs> There's some wow. clapping. There's some clapping, it's like, but it's very confused clapping. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think he says to uh I think he says to Garandel, remind me to never do that again. Oh man. I shall put that he pulls out a little sleeve like underneath his like from a ring. Not a sleeve, a scroll that comes out of a ring. This is my reminder ring. Yes. Can you all do another awareness check, please? Yeah. Eighteen. Excellent. Seven. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm loving. Just Carton is just oblivious. <laughs> Carton so much. is just living in the moment. So I think last time I told Garandel that Bombadiglio looks suspicious, right? 
Yeah, he's waiting for someone. Okay, so, okay, Carton, now you notice that Bombadiglio is looking a little bit just a little bit shifty. You didn't think he was before. You were like, see, this man is clearly who he says he is. <laughs> um, but Bombadiglio is looking just a little bit nervous, a little bit like he's waiting <laughs> for something. He keeps, like, kind of scratching at, like, like the area right around his neck. More like in front. Kind of kind of right between your neck and, like, your chest. And he's kind of, like, moving his fingers around at something there. But trying not to be super obvious about it. Garandel, you hear something. You hear something that's not... You're pretty sure it's not from the crowd, not from any performance. It just sounds very strange. In fact, it sounds like something you've never heard before. And it seems to be getting a little closer. Cartan, I think, turns to uh, Bombadigli and goes... Bombadigli and goes, uh, you, seem, you seem nervous. Are you, are you performing next, maybe? Oh, no, I'm, I'm not performing. Uh... Not, not as such. Uh, let's see. Who do we have next to look forward to on this on this wonderful list of? Uh, I know entertainers. I know exactly who's going up next. It's time. <laughs> you do. It's oh hell time. yeah! Is it happening? A larger man walks onto the stage, wielding nothing but a crossbow. <laughs> he says nothing. No words. <laughs> no introduction. A hush falls over the crowd. Yes. The crowd knows this man, for they he do. is from they do. this village. Oh, my and God. And he has performed, not every year, not every year. Every year he's right. able. But- <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. He's, he hasn't been here. He has, he's not, you know, He's. I don't think he's old enough to have performed all 20 years but he's been here for enough that everyone knows everyone's ready tensed whether to run <laughs> or to cheer we or don't know cheer. yes <laughs> the man on stage ever so slowly extends the crossbow directly <laughs> above his head and straight up into the air straight so up. who's gonna roll Fire. for this i got it go for it <laughs> and the man Shoots the crossbow. (laughs) And the crossbow bolt shoots upward. Everyone squints to find it as it goes up into the air. And as it comes back down, the man, (gasps) who they all know is um shit, reaches to try to catch the crossbow bolt as it comes down. He doesn't grab it. Okay. Instead, it just lands on the ground. He rolled a 12. And the crowd all goes, oh. Oh, Okay. So he loads it again. Oh my god! <laughs> and he does it again, baby. It's like a horror movie <laughs> yes. where you know there's a jump coming and you just have to wait it out. All right, this one was a little bit worse. It wasn't eleven, so it goes okay. up, and he just he misses. And this time, the crossbow bolt just almost falls off the stage, but it still lands in the stage. It's like the people and the, the crowd goes like, mm. oh. So he loads it again. <laughs> Garton goes, are we all just going to stand back and watch this happen? This is a very strange ritual and I am enticed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. This time the crossbow bolt goes up into the air. It arcs. It comes down. And as um shit goes to grab it, it hits him directly in his hand. It goes no. through his hand. He rolled a two. Oh no! <laughs> and um, shit stands there and just goes. Oh. Mm. You know what's the silver lining, the positive about this though? <laughs> At least we can be pretty sure that's the worst thing that'll ever happen to him on a stage. Yeah. <laughs> this time. <laughs> does he do it again? Of course he does. Oh my god. He's got to win. He's got to win. We know it. All right. With the bolt still through his hand, I think the like. Whatever village healers you've got are, like, begging him to stop. The children are crying. <laughs> the women are pleading. But nay, he cannot resist <laughs> as he loads a bolt into the crossbow and shoots it in the air. Everyone oh, wonders, no. how is this a talent? No. And there it is, folks. This time, uh-huh. as the crossbow arches in the sky, people sh- covering their eyes in fear. This time, as he goes out to catch it, he just drops the crossbow entirely <gasps> with his good hand. Yep. Catches it perfectly oh with my his goodness. hand 
in midair as he rolled a 19. Oh, that's amazing! <sighs> and the crowd goes... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> they're, not, they're not even cheering. They're just relieved. It's like, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Carton, Carton is just... Oh, my goodness. Garandel is feverishly right. He wrote down everything that I just said with those words. With all the <laughs> fancy... Man, this if this fellow doesn't go to the real Sun Festival, I don't know who else deserves it. Surely this man <laughs> must be the winner. <laughs> He's got my vote. How do we vote? Does Bump... Mr. Diglio... You must let this man win. He actually looks even more obviously like he's waiting for something that hasn't happened yet. And he's just like, yes, we'll certainly have the voting. Let's see. I suppose there's no more performers. Sir, my latest suspicion, Diglio. (laughs) You know you have no need to keep secrets from me. What are you waiting for? Tell me, please. He looks at you, he starts to smile a little bit, and he says, What am I waiting for? Okay. Now, yep. <laughs> I don't need you guys to roll awareness this time, because <laughs> everyone feels that the ground is shaking a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, God, not again. And <laughs> as you look out, as you look out around the town square, the stage area, you realize that these torches are indeed even brighter, and maybe they've been getting brighter the whole time, and uh, a certain narrator forgot to mention that, but they've definitely been getting stronger, and that noise you heard, Garandel, that's getting a little louder, and the ground is just trembling a little bit, and you're not the only two who notice it this time, and Gary actually rushes up to you from where he's been, like, running back and forth with his tasks, and he's like... Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Garandel, uh, a thought has occurred to me when you were you were asking me about uh, what happened six years ago, and uh, oh yes, I was I was telling you a little bit about uh, some things that happened with a uh, with a certain a certain wizard. And while he's clearly about to be explaining more, there is like the side of a building on the edge of the town square, and there's just an awful crunch, and like part of the building is like flattened. And, of course, everybody gasps and looks over there. And what comes striding through into the town square, I can only describe as, like, this large, feathered, hoofed beast that has, like, a beak. It's got all these different weird characteristics that don't seem like they should go together. It has a weirdly long body, like, longer than most regular pigs. Yes. (laughs) It's like... A couple of, like, useless feathered wings. It has a big snout, but also a beak, which is super weird. And it makes this awful, like, kind of chirping, snorting sound, which is that sound you heard that you couldn't describe. The beacon. People are yelling and, like, running away, and this creature is, like, stomping around the town square. It It is, its eyes, it's like recoiling from the bright light, but also it looks like very angry. It looks like the light is making it even more into a frenzy and like uh, into a rage because of these crazy bright lights. I think Kartan uh, like look, it looks around and goes, if only the wizard from six years ago was here to control <laughs> the beast he created. Well, it's, it's funny you should say that. It's funny you should say that because Bomba Diglio is now laughing and he he actually like spreads his arm wide one last time and he says now it is time for my revenge against the village of stephanie and then he brings out his wand again and he does some kind of motion with it and you recognize the telltale shimmer of illusion magic and he vanishes or at least oh, it looks no. like he does he's trying to make sure he can hide himself away while this big thing goes crazy And the other interesting thing is that this animal doesn't just look mad at the lights. It looks like it's looking for something. Mm. And it's even more angry about that. Uh, So basically, the I hate to say it, but the Jubilee has kind of broken down. Oh, bummer. Yeah. I think think Kartan turns to, to Garandel and says, Oh... He was the wizard from six years ago the whole time. <laughs> if only we could have seen this coming. If only. If we could only. have prevented it. <sighs> if only there had been some level 
of storytelling done to foreshadow he this event. He looked completely different. <laughs> right. There were no signs at Especially all. Especially the fact that he had already shown to be an illusory mage. <laughs> <sighs> but I think it's safe to say that last performer, I think he sh- I think he's the winner, yes? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, I am at a I'm in a difficult position here, Kartan, because it is against my creed to intervene in such events. Um, so I'm just it gonna is? write shit down. <laughs> yeah. So you you gotta save everyone. Oh I will record God. your heroism, but I'm I can't really get too involved. Uh, kind of surprisingly, there's actually people running to Gary. There's a few people asking him, like, "Oh my God, what do we do?" And they're like, uh, asking him for for advice. Uh, now that their current Jubilee guy in charge has kind of betrayed them and vanished. Yeah, Carton also runs over to Gary and goes, Gary, you have knowledge of the Pegan. What are its weaknesses? <laughs> and he, uh, Gary says, Ah, uh, um, uh, let's see, well... Uh, also, I thought you killed that, Gary. Oh, I was I was supposed to. I was ordered to, but I uh, I went out into the wilderness and I, I simply couldn't do it. It seemed this this creature, or, or, or creatures, I suppose, it had done nothing wrong, and I simply couldn't, I couldn't bear to kill it for something that wasn't his fault, so, so I let it go. I figured, uh, I would t- it would take his chances out in the wild. I didn't think it would steadily grow to an enormous size over six years. I didn't really see that coming. Like a goldfish. <laughs> like a goldfish, yes. <laughs> and then, Gary says, um, let's see, I don't, I don't believe it's trying to hunt down me, because I did let it go free, after all. It sees you as a father figure. I, I, I guess it might. That's that's sort of worrying in its own way. But no, it looks like it's it's on the hunt for someone else. It looks like it's angry at someone else. Probably Bombadiglio. It is still roaring and, like, trying to swat down these torches. And whenever it knocks down a torch, um, the light flickers and it's, like, way back to normal. Uh, like a regular torch until it crashes to the ground and ostensibly the torch gets put out when it hits the ground. Or some of them don't, I suppose. But, yeah, basically, the torches getting super crazy bright was also an illusion. I have an idea. Okay. And, um, really quickly, Carton, um, whips up some very, very dark, like, black glass, like, obsidian caps to put on the remaining torches to kind of douse them. The stage is kind of like a square, so we'll say, from where you guys are, the left side of the stage, someone on the left side of the town square, someone blurts out, uh, although you can't see anyone, a voice blurts out, Hey, why did you... Oh, oh, no. And then the voice goes quiet again. <laughs> Carton, I think I found our man. <laughs> Quick, everybody run in a big group towards the left side of the stage. Some people do. Uh, it's a little weird. It's, a, it's kind of a strange order to give, so not everyone does, but some people do. Yeah, and I think while people are, like, running around wildly on that part, that area of the town square, some people bump into something. And there's like an oof! Or they bomb into something. (laughs) Oh my god. Sure, they bomb into something. Uh, Um, Karkan rushes to the area where there is like a disturbance. Okay, yeah, there's definitely something there. And I think each time he gets hit, probably the magic of this particular hiding wears off a little bit, and you can pretty clearly see the form of Bombadiglio, uh, with all of his big, bulky, crazy clothes and everything. Okay, he grabs Bombadiglio, and he, like, shakes him, and he goes, take responsibility for your creation. He actually reaches into, like, the front of his robes and everything, like, at his neckline, and he pulls out something, because the invisibility is still kinda, uh, flipping back and forth, you can't totally see what he has in his hand, but he definitely clutches onto something, that uh, makes the illusion come back, and it's harder to see him again. Is he still holding on to him, though? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He's, he's trying to squirm and get away, though. Okay, uh, Carton feels around for, like, whatever it is he's holding and tries to grab it away from him. God, I I guess we should do some kind of rolling. I, I feel bad that I told you guys we wouldn't need anything except awareness. This seems like a pretty fair time to have that happen. Let's just each roll a d20 and see where we go from there. Okay. I just rolled an 18. Hell yeah. Bombadiglio only rolled a 13. You definitely have some kind of, like, amulet or something in your hand. 
Okay, he's gonna just yank it. He's just yeah. gonna yank it as hard as he can. Absolutely. And I think when it breaks, the, the chain breaks, I mean, the illusion spell fades, and Bomba Diglio's face looks different. Like he was using another illusion spell to make his own appearance seem different. And there's a couple people around who gasp and point at him, and you kind of figure out from context what that means. It's the wizard. It's- <laughs> hey, everyone, is that the wizard from six years ago? I knew it the whole time. <laughs> hey, also, when the two of you guys say that, the creature that has been knocking stuff over and causing a ruckus turns and looks at you, and it sees and the- a- Yeah. And it sees Bombadiglio, and it sees the amulet you have that cast the spell that, like, hurt it and turned it into this horrifying mutant. And it, like, its eyes get, like, narrower, and it starts growling, and it starts running towards him. And Bombadiglio, he panics. He lets go of you. He starts booking it as fast as he can. I think it quite literally chases him out of town. And the ruckus is over, and there's just, like, this weird pounding sound of feet that are somehow both little bird claws and also hooves (laughs) at the same time. (laughs) And there's a man yelling, Oh, no! Like, falling away (laughs) into the distance. That's the end of the destruction of this village. And I think people kind of start to poke their heads out from around buildings again and some more people kind of filter into the town square. Things are actually pretty quiet for the first time all evening. Everyone's just kind of looking at each other like, what the hell just happened? I think Gary in particular approaches the two of you guys and he's just kind of like, well, that wasn't what I expected, but uh, you got the gist of what I was trying to tell you before everything went uh, went all sideways cuckoo bananas over there. So uh, thank you seems like a strange thing to say but uh you kind of I, I i think you saved our village so yes i could have stepped in at any point and <laughs> and stop this from happening uh as i have figured it out from the moment i stepped into town <laughs> but um i did not want to uh to ruin the show for um shit because he uh he yeah. was doing a very good job he, he really did we're all very proud of him uh i think um shit like nods at you guys very solemnly of course he doesn't yes. say anything but he does mm. he does acknowledge your praise, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna do great things. I believe that. Oh. <laughs> I think he's gonna go and take Costarine by storm. <laughs> Maybe even meet King Edward himself. He's really gonna <laughs> knock him dead, yeah. I, I hope not. I've heard <laughs> he's not very nice. Well this has all been very nice and I've gotten <laughs> some good food and some drink. But it seems as though the competition is over and I'm very tired. Yeah. Jehoshaphat is back and he kind of approaches the whole... There's now a group congregating around you guys and a lot of people are talking all at once. But he says, uh, I I think drinks are in order, of course. And uh, 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 the drink stall was crushed horribly beneath the, the, (laughs) the mutant feet of some sort of crazy forest creature. So the boar's head was crushed beneath the boar's head. Mm. It, it, well, that's, that's poetic. Are you some kind of writer? You should be. <laughs> well, <laughs> hmm, careful with your, 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 your nouns, sir. I, I write, but I am not the oh, writer. Okay. I'm right. sorry. I don't, I don't go to the library much. <laughs> yes. I don't even see one here. I don't even see a library in your village. <laughs> Well, uh, we'd certainly be delighted to treat you to uh, uh, some drinks over at our our, our actual tavern. Uh, that's not a, a stall out in the middle of the square that's been destroyed. <laughs> it's it seems this is a night for celebration. I think this sounds very nice. As long as the celebration ends with me landing in the bed somewhere. Yeah, how about that? Just give us a free room and board for the night for our combined work. Oh, of course. That's that's the least we can do. Great. Thanks, Mickey Mouse. I mean, Gary. I was I was worried because I didn't have any kind of fun ending scene. So in my mind, it was just going to be like uh, everybody getting drinks and the fun and kooky characters you've met having a good time. But this works, too. Um, I think the two of you just go to sleep. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, you just get rooms and you go to bed. And that's literally the end of the story. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> mm. Garandel, he he finishes writing the scroll. You know, he puts the date at the end of it all, and he says, "Wow, when I get back to the world's memory and and share my story, they're literally not going to believe any of the stuff I just wrote down." 
And uh, as he's going to bed, Carton says, Someday I will have to find Bomba Diglio and tell him that the man from six years ago <laughs> reappeared in the town. <laughs> Hey, Questies, it's me, Nathan. Thank you so much for listening to the Ballad of Bombadiglio. I hope you enjoyed our, our special little episode. I know Jamie put a lot of work into it, and I think it turned out quite nicely. That was a lot, we had a lot of fun making it, so let us know if you enjoyed that. And if you did, then maybe we'll do some more one-shot story adventures where maybe Jake or myself or Jamie again uh, runs it, and maybe we'll flesh out the world a little bit more. So let us know your thoughts, and of course, let us know how you think Stephanie is supposed to be spelled on our Night's Quest Facebook group. But you will not be getting a one-shot episode in two weeks. Instead, you're going to be getting the next episode in the series, uh, episode 29 of season two. So we'll be back. Don't worry. Thank you for your patience as we figured out the, the glitches over here. So it'll be back. We'll be resuming our good old shenanigans. And I like this next episode. It's It's pretty nice. It's a nice episode. Otherwise, I have a shout-out that I want to do. That's right. I want to shout-out Kurt Peters for their very nice review on Apple Podcasts. They said it's the best show ever, so that's that's very high praise. So thank you, Kurt Peters, for that very kind review. I can't believe I didn't see it until now. I guess I just haven't been checking reviews very often. So if you leave us a review, we'll give you a shout-out. So, Kurt Peters, you get the gold star. You get the gold star of the week. Congratulations. Uh, otherwise, everyone else, please leave kind reviews. We love hearing that. Or you can go join us on our social medias on Instagram and, of course, on Reddit and on Facebook. Love to hear your thoughts. Love to see your memes. Oh, they're good. Good stuff. Um, and as always, if you want to support the show, you can go to our website. That's nathanstreck.wixsite.com slash NiceQuest, where you can buy all of our stickers. we got a nice better logo, the Night's Quest logo, and, of course, a Honest as Ajax coin. Get stickers of that. Or you can go and buy the music. That Jamie has been making. We got three albums on there. And who knows, the fourth one? It's in the works. It'll be coming before you can even realize it. So go to the website. Give us some support. Leave us reviews. Give us support. You guys are all amazing fans. We really appreciate having you here. um, Listening to us week in and week out. Um, So in two weeks, which is uh, June 19th. Which, fun fact, that's the Sun Festival weekend. If you were ever wondering when the Sun Festival was, it's technically on the 21st of June. So that weekend, we'll be celebrating the Sun Festival. So, I don't know, get your get your acts together. It's it's not the Star Jubilee. It's not the Star Jubilee. It's a little bit bigger. So, I don't know, maybe submit your uh, Night's Quest-related talent. And, um, I don't know, maybe we'll give out a prize for that. So, if you've got something creative you want to tie into that, send it in before the next episode and... And we'll celebrate the Sun Festival together. I don't know, maybe you play one of the, the theme song on an actual instrument, or you can do sand magic, or food magic. If you can do food magic, that's a guarantee win right there. So let us see what you've got as we celebrate the Sun Festival. Uh, otherwise, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, love each other, and we're going to see you all next time. May your place in his story be long. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Umshit's house. Oh no! <laughs> I'm just he he recovers from his injury. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. He got shot in the hand by himself. <sighs>